Well, moving right along, welcome to part four of the Home Networking Guide video series. My name is Tony with the Quick Tech Solutions channel, and today we're going to be talking about firewall rules, particularly how to block the guest network and the IoT network from accessing your router's interface settings, your main network, while still allowing access to the public internet. So that said, let's get right to it. We're signed in here to our GCC 6010. We're gonna primarily work in the firewall area today. So let's click the firewall symbol at the top of the page and then come over and click the firewall policy and then inbound rules. You can see we have a list of default rules. One particularly important rule is this anti-lockout rule. Whatever you do, be sure do not delete this rule. This is there as a safety net to prevent you from getting locked out of your device. So the first rule we're going to create is blocking the guest network from accessing the router and the router's interface. So let's come up, let's click the add button. Let's give it a name. You can call this whatever you want, something that is easily identifiable to you. I'm going to call it block guest access to router. And then we're going to make sure the status is enabled. IP family is any, that's fine. The protocol type we're going to change to UDP, TCP, but the source WAN group is the key. We want to make sure from the drop down we select the guest VLAN because it's the guest interface or the guest VLAN that we want to block from getting access to our router's interface. So now that we have that set, the destination is going to be the router itself. So 192.168.80. Dot one, and then under the destination ports, we're going to block the following three ports. Now you may not understand fully why, again, this is a beginning series, but you're going to have to trust me on this one. We're going to block port 22, port 80, and port 443. Separate them by commas. And then finally, under the action, you have the option to accept, deny, or drop. We're going to say drop all traffic destined to the router on these three ports. We're going to go ahead now and click on save. And now we have our first rule created. However, we still need to allow the guest network to get out to the actual internet via the gateway. So we're going to create a second rule now called allow guests to internet. So we're going to do something similar. We're going to hit the add button. We'll call this allow guests to internet. Again, you can call this whatever makes sense for you. The status is enabled. The IP family is any, that's fine. The protocol type, we're going to make it all. The source group, again, this is the key right here. We're working on the guest network, so we're going to pick the guest interface or the source group, VLAN. And then for the actual destination, again, it's going to be the 192.168.1 address. That's the gateway address or the router address. And then this time we're going to say action accept. And now if you're confused, why do we create a block? And then we created an allow to the same IP address. Well, we, if you remember in the first rule, rule we blocked certain ports. So traffic headed towards those ports we're blocking, but we're allowing everything else and the ability to get out to the actual internet. So that said, now we have our two key rules. The next thing is to block the guest network from all of our internal networks. We don't want our guests to access our main network or any other network um, that we've set up internally. So the first one we're gonna do is called block guest to uh, our RFC 192 addresses. So those are our private in IP address. So we're gonna come up and we're gonna say add and I'm just going to call this block guest to RFC 192. Again, if you don't fully understand it, just trust me. This is an important rule to have. And you don't have to call it RFC 192. You could just say block guest to internal network. We're going to say status enable. We're going to say protocol type all. And then the source group again is going to be the guest network because that's the network we want to block. 
and then under the destination IP, we're going to put in 192.168.0.0 slash 16. And then the action is going to be to drop. And what this is going to do is block your guest network to any internal network you have that's on the 192 um, address range. So let's go ahead and hit save. And now we have our rule there. The next rule we're going to add is similar. And I wish there was a duplication rule here, the ability to duplicate, but we're going to create it from scratch. We're going to call this block guest. And then there's another series of internal addresses in the 172 range. So we're going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to call it block to RFC 172 and then the IP address, any, make sure it's enabled. The protocol type is all again, the source group is going to be blocked the guest VLAN. And then under the default uh, destination, I, under the destination IP address, we're going to put the range for the 172 network. So that's going to be 172.16.0.0 slash 12. And then again, we're going to change the action to drop and then say save. We got one more that we need to do and that's a set of addresses in the 10 range. So we're going to hit add. We're going to call block guest to RFC 10. Again, you can call this whatever you wish. We're going to leave, make sure it's enabled. IP uh, family all, protocol type all, source group. Again, important, WAN, um, not WAN, guest. And then we're going to come down to the destination address and it's going to be 10.0.0.0 slash eight. And finally, the action is going to be drop and then save. And we have our three rules. So we have a total of five rules. We're blocking. Actually, where's our fifth? There we go. We have our block guest to the router's interface. We have allow the guests out to the internet. Then we are blocking our guests to our all our 192 networks, blocking our guests to all our 172 networks, even though in this home network build, we don't have any networks in that range. And the same thing applies, blocking all our guests to our 10 networks. And again, in this build, we don't have any of our, any 10 networks in this build. But if we did, now we're covered. Now that said, you can do exactly the same thing for the IOT and any other VLANs that you have created. I don't feel that it's necessary to go through it all and show you the same exact rules. The only difference would be is the interface that you pick. For example, if we were creating this rule here, this block rule to drop, let's get into the edit mode. We want to block the guest to access to the router. We also want to block in the case of the IOT, we'd want to block the IOT to the router. So instead of the source group being guest, your source group would be your IOT VLAN. Everything else would remain the same. So you can recreate all the rules that I've shown you here for the IOT network and any other VLANs that you should happen to create in the future as your network expands. So again, I hope you're finding some value in this video series. I know some of it may seem confusing, but if you follow these steps, uh, again, you'll, you'll achieve what you're trying to achieve. And again, hopefully it'll intrigue you to want to learn more about the nuts and bolts behind why you have to do all of this. All right, let's test out the firewall rules to show you that in fact they are working. You can see the computer is on the guest network at 192.168.20.104. So that's what we want. We're going to try to get out to the internet here. Let's do a search for, all right, good pizza in Savannah. I was looking that up recently and you could see that it brings up search results. And if I click on Screaming Mimi's, you can see it brings up that and I can go to Screaming Mimi's website and there you go. However, if I want to get to the login page for the router, it should deny me access. So let's try that.
Okay, and I don't know if you can see it up here, but it's spinning, spinning, spinning. Eventually, it should time out. We should get a message that says, can't access the site. While that's working, trying to access the site, let's go into another new tab and see if we can get to the admin interface or the login page for the network switch. Now, remember, in a previous video, we set that address to a static IP address of 192.168.80.3. So let's give that a shot. And again, it's spinning, spinning. The attempt to try to access the router is still spinning. The attempt to try to access the switch is still spinning. However, we can go out to the public internet. Let's take a look at the menu. And you can see that we have the menu coming up for Screaming Mimi's. So everything seems to be working. And eventually, this should time out. And this should time out. Let's give it a little time and let's see what happens. So we have one timeout here and eventually the switch should time out as well. So if you are finding value in this video, please give it a like. Please consider subscribing. Let me know what you think. Put your comments down below underneath the video. And if you'd like to see more content like this, please click the video on the screen. Thank you so much for watching.